What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday. No, it's Tuesday, isn't it? That's confusing. September 7th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, on a Widow Wednesday, on a Tuesday, with the one, the only, the rogue one, at Gary Widow. It's not just you, Greg. That long weekend thing threw me off as well. I woke up feeling like it was Monday, and then I realized I was doing Kind of Funny Games Daily with you, and I was yeah. like, oh, what, but what a great way to start the work week. There it is. And I'm back here. I wasn't here at all last week. So now look at me hanging out with you now. We're back at it. We're having like a bad Although episode. I had a great show last week with uh, Tamur. That was a really Oh, I know. I listened I to it. That. It was a great episode. I liked you how gotta, it was you just 15 pay- minutes at the front of you guys talking about where you grew up in the UK. I was like, well, that's People awesome. loved it. And I loved it. You got of to pair us more often. Look at us drinking out of water bottles, Gary. Look at the sponsored freebie merch influencer. You ordered Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, that's right. I just got this back. I've I've got uh, Discord right here. Look at that. Our friend Allie had stolen this for a long time, but I got it back. Don't worry about it. Long may the free shit continue to rain down upon us. That's what we all need. That's what we all need. The only reason I fucking do this shit, Greg, is for the free free merch. Sure. Of course. Is it a free shirt? Where is this space rock shirt? Oh, first off, you did this again. All right, before we hit this, everybody, I want you to know, don't spoil the idea, Gary, because I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm I pitched you a anything. great idea for January 2022. Kind of funny day. We're in the brand new studio. We're going to have a Patreon thermometer, all these. Uh, I just pitched you when you're like, well, am I going to get some of that money? Yeah, you're going to get the money when I, when we pay you to be on the shows. You know what I mean? Yeah, when you when you pay me to do this one show, which I do every week. Yeah. But you want me to, but then, but now you want me to do ex- extra special additional content, which would be a massive fucking pain in my dick. Am I going to get paid extra for that? Extra work equals extra pay. This I mean, we America. can negotiate what that. But you were just like, you, I mean, you don't want to be a team player. I got Phil not... Spencer breathing down my neck trying to take Paris Lily. I'm desperately reaching Listen, in couch you should cushions, just run a, you trying just, to get some quarters to pay this man the white to flag around. Around right now. You can't fight Phil Spencer. You know Phil's going to win that war. Just fucking that pocketbook, wave, you know what wave I mean? the you white wanna... flag of surrender right now. If you want to talk to me about providing additional content, for kind of funny, I'll put your people with my people. I've said it before. If you ain't getting paid, you're getting played. Come correct, Greg, and we'll talk. All right, fine. I'll talk. We'll talk. Okay, I'll, I'll pitch the idea to Tim. We'll see if he likes it for his thermometer because he's very protective of his thermometer. Right, Kevin? As he should be. That ri- that rising phallus. He's got that become, thermometer throbbing over there and gorged with Patreon. Gorged you know I mean? with that gorgeous. hot blood of your, of your uh, Patreon's uh, donations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Uh, Gary, how you been? I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, I've been good. I had a really uh, enjoyable three-day weekend. Nice. Uh, took the opportunity to uh, catch up on movies and TV shows and video games that had been... made. I made a tiny, tiny dent in the backlog, but even a I'm small very, dent felt like, felt like I'm, something. I'm very jealous of you, all right? Because, of course, so? as you know, we live and die here by review embargoes. So I'm working mm. on Redacted and Redacted that I'll be re- 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 reviewing here on uh, tomorrow's Gamescast. Wait, no. Yeah. We recorded today, not on live, because it's got embargoes. Publishing tomorrow, Gamescast, yada, yada, a bunch of reviews. However, I saw you just beat Lake, and I have been waiting for Lake for so long. Lake is out. Lake is on my Xbox. I did yeah. the day one you know, prologue of Lake, but I haven't had time to sit down and play it. What did you think of Lake? I absolutely loved it. I did a five-hour stream of it yesterday. I, I played the first half of it on Saturday night. And really got it. Oh, Sunday night, I should say. And really, really got into it. And I was like, man, I'm enjoying this so much. I kind of want to like stream it and share it with uh, an audience. And so I did kind of the second, I played like the first half of it on Sunday. So probably about, I would say like an eight to 10 hour game overall, the way I played it, which was at a kind of leisurely pace. Well, that's Um, the whole game, right? If you don't know, you're delivering mail in a small town. You're walking around, you're talking to people, you're getting to know them. It's a Greg ass game. And and what I loved about it was because it's a, you you keep expecting it to turn into like like a body's going to turn up or <laughs> she's got supernatural powers or something. It's going to have some Twin Peaks, Stranger Things, Life yeah, is yeah, Strange yeah. kind of vibe. But it really doesn't. It's like the most mellow shit. You deliver the mail. You have nice conversations with your friends over coffee. You chill out in the evening on your couch watching sitcoms and reading books. And that's kind of it. And you keep thinking, is this game going to take like a weird turn? And it doesn't, and it's glorious, and I love it, and it's so chill and mellow. And the narrative does eventually goes. I'm saying it just doesn't go like in a wacky direction, but there is a, a proper story. Sure. And to me, it's kind of about like the choices that you make in life and this kind of stuff. And it's it, it's got like a real philosophical kind of um, underpinning to it. But it's just so chill, and I wish they made more games like this. Just a little kind of slice of life. You know, there's nothing too crazy happens. It's just. You get to spend, you know, two weeks in this beautiful little idyllic 
you know, Oregonian lakeside town. And it's like, oh my God, I want to, I want to move to live, live in one of these towns. It's so peaceful. It's a beautiful game. It's got a beautiful soundtrack. It is going to, it's going to creep onto my game of the year list. I think Ooh. it's about, you can finish it in a weekend. It's 20 bucks. It's on Xbox and PC. I absolutely loved it. And I heartily recommend it to anyone. Is it game? I, wanna, I want you to, no, it's not on Game Pass. Okay. I want I want you to, which, you know, it's funny because so much stuff is on Game Pass. We were always kind of surprised. You assume everything's on Game Pass at this point. But right? it's apt, I, I kind of wish it were because if it were, I think more people would try it and go, oh, what sure. a delightful little game. But I'll I'll definitely try and get as many people who are listening and watching right now uh, to give it a try. It's on Steam. It's on, um, you know, uh, Xbox and PC game, uh, uh, you know, whatever, you know, Microsoft, whatever you want to call it. Um, and for 20 bucks, it's like a good 10 hours. Like it's, it's a couple of, nights of, of gameplay finish it in a weekend and it was just wonderful i really really enjoyed it and i i, I would actually want you to play it greg because i think you will really love it i know you know i'm gonna love it i, I mean, know your I sensibilities well enough it. to know yeah i think you're gonna really like it and i want to i want to compare notes with you uh i really want to know what ending you pick and i want to <sighs> and i want to talk to you about how we picked our endings because it's very interesting yeah for sure that'll be a great conversation and i'm down to do it i think once i get on the other side of these reviews it opens up to where i can get into it but believe it or not ladies and gentlemen lake isn't the only video game we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about playstation reversing its course on the horizon upgrade tripwires president stepping down and the alan wake remaster being real we'll cover all of this and more because this is kind of funny games daily each and every weekday on a variety of platforms we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about if you like that be part of the show over at patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can write in with your questions your comments your takes on the video game news of the day of course on patreon.com slash kind of funny games you can get the show ad free you can get it with the exclusive post show we do you can write in for squad up and you can get all these benefits and so much more for things like the games cast ps i love you xoxo the x cast and the next gen podcast however if you have no bucks to toss our way it's no big deal you could be watching us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games if you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games you have a special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe each and every week day house keeping for you it's September on twitch viewers across the platform throughout the month can take advantage of 20 percent off subscriptions for first time subscribers and gifted subs your support means the world to us here at kind of funny and right now you can take advantage of this deal and receive benefits like ad free viewing sub emotes and more that's specifically for you folks watching on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games as we record the show like right now <laughs> like the Lou 55 mankind art and OM Jesus. Uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching later and you have Amazon Prime, that means you have uh, Twitch Gaming. Uh, Twitch Gaming, of course, gives you a free sub of your choice on Twitch.tv. So go over to Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, link your Amazon account, and you can give it away each and every 30 days. They don't remind you because they want you to forget and not use the benefit. Uh, more housekeeping for you. Remember, there is a PlayStation Showcase this Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific, and we will be reacting live on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. Prediction are up right now as an episode of PSI Love You XOXO on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you to the Patreon producers for this episode. Uh, the kind of funny Destiny 2 PC clan, Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by Honey, DraftKings, and American Giant, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Got four items on the rope report. Baker's dozen. Could have gone bigger with it, uh, Kevin. Not your Baker's dozen. I mean the number of stories, but one of them is humongous. Two of them are great conversation pieces. I was almost put in a fifth one that don't nod is going to officially allow people to work from home, but there I just said it, but doesn't count. Only got four. So let's start with number one, Gary Witta. Something I think you have an opinion about. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West uh, has been backpedaled on by PlayStation. Of course, last week, everyone was flipping out about the PlayStation 4 PS5 upgrade paths. If you don't remember, the PlayStation blog, blog, <laughs> blog uh, put up a whole bunch of the different editions. And Gary, do you feel like we have too many special editions of games at this point? I did read a piece uh, over the weekend about all the different SKUs that they have for Forbidden, uh, Forbidden West. And what is it, like seven different 
Skews we got the digital the... deluxe edition. You got the special edition. We got the collector's edition. We got the regalia edition. I regalia. mean, listen, I, 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 I've never really cared about those special editions with the big giant boxes and the and yeah. the figurines and the helmets and the you know the, all the gubbins that they include. Let me, as you will soon discover, Greg. Let me tell you, once you've got kids, you don't have any room in your house for all that shit. You, you start to really appreciate digital versions of games. This is why I love digital games. I've got no room in my house for all these fucking games, and especially not the big collector's edition boxes um but it, it seems like they have really really gone all out with forbidden west i was reading about how so there's a big giant super deluxe version with a, like a mammoth statue but That's then there's right. a super duper deluxe version with an even better mammoth statue and some more shit and it's fine listen if you've got room in your house and disposable income and that's the kind of shit you want go f go fucking knock yourselves out like ha have at it that's great it is it is a lot of um skews the uh, the confusion of course is stemming not from do i want the big mammoth statue or the bigger mammoth statue it's stemming from the ps4 versus ps5 well, stuff mainly, do you Sony, want your do you want your replica focus and stand you know little things you no, do, well, uh, do i want it no absolutely <laughs> fucking not um there, but, I again, there's, but there's, a, but there's a market there's a whole market of single gamers out there who have a lot of disposable income who love this shit and they want to put this shit on their shelves. And Sony is providing you. that to that to that particular market. Nothing Just wrong with a that. lot of additions with a lot of bullet points and a lot of different uh, updates. And if you remember when they put these all up last week, one of the things they included at the end was for players looking to have access to both the PS4 and PlayStation 5 versions of Horizon Forbidden West, please purchase the deluxe uh, digital deluxe collectors or regalia edition. Dual entitlement does not apply to the standard or special editions. This got announced, people wigged out. Understandably yeah. so, right? Because, of course, PlayStation had said they would give you these free upgrades, uh, but then they didn't on this one. And so people were back and forth, and this isn't great, and yada, yada, yada. And it only took a little while. About, you know, what, two days, 24 hours, 48 hours? I, I Time is a flat circle, and I wasn't here last week. But I know that the <laughs> Blessing and Janet were able to talk about it on the PS I Love You. They recorded for today. They recorded it on a Friday. And then on Saturday, PlayStation re reversed course with this statement. This is Jim Ryan over on the PlayStation blog. Of course, Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment. Thursday was to be a celebration of Horizon Forbidden West and the amazing team at Gorilla working to deliver it on February 18th, 2022. However, it's abundantly clear that the offerings we confirmed in our pre-order kickoff missed the mark. Last year, we made a commitment to deliver free upgrades for our cross-gen launch titles, which included Horizon Forbidden West. While the pandemic's profound impact pushed Horizon forbidden west out of the launch window we initially envisioned we will stand by our offer players who purchase horizon forbidden west on playstation 4 will be able to upgrade to the playstation 5 version for free i also want to confirm today that moving forward playstation first party exclusives i'm sorry playstation first party exclusive cross-gen titles parentheses newly releasing on ps4 and ps5 both digital and physical will offer a 10 dollars digital upgrade option from ps4 to ps5 this will apply to the next God of War and Gran Turismo 7 and any exclu any other exclusive cross-gen PS4 and PS5 titles published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. End of statement, Jim Ryan. Gary, you had a dynamite conversation over on the Kind of Funny X-Cast this Thursday. Or, no, I'm sorry, this, this Saturday. It was you, Mike, Paris, Lily, of course, talking about, hey, man, when this is all a build-up to it, we'll build up to this new generation, we talked of, is smart delivery some kind of buzzword? And how PlayStation coming out and dropping the ball on this Horizon stuff, getting caught with, oh, well, we said launch window, and this was launch window, but now it's not launch window, so now we're going to – all this stuff that happened. Are you happy with this statement from Jim Ryan and this reverse, of course? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, they've ultimately done the right thing. Of course, they had to be forced you know, by you know, a consumer revolt into doing it. It does you know, show the power of the people. Uh, if you remember, Microsoft – uh, were forced into a similar uh, walk back not too long ago when they tried to jack up the prices of Xbox Live. Remember that? And people said, fuck that, we're not having it. And Microsoft very, very quickly walked it back and in fact improved the offering from where it was before. It's good to see that happening again. Of course, the, the shitty place, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Sony you know, made a statement that this wasn't going to happen. They reneged on it, thought they were going to get away with it. They clearly weren't. And we did, yeah, we did talk on the Xcast about why this isn't a small deal. Like, you're going to want to have that upgrade path, right? Because right now, Forbidden West coming out in February, it's entirely likely with the massive demand for PlayStation 5 that is continuing over the holidays and beyond, and with the chip shortage that is, you know, probably a, another year at least of, gonna, of being a major issue, that you're going to be able to get, you, you will be able to get a copy of uh, Forbidden West in February, but you won't be able to get 
a PS5. But you, like, you, maybe you really, really, really like Horizon, right? And you don't want to wait. And so you're going to get it for the PS4 so you can play it right away. But when you do eventually get a PS5, you're going to want to bring it over. And you're not going to want to have to buy the game again or pay some exorbitant fee in order to you know have that upgrade. So... I think, yeah, it absolutely made sense for Sony to make some kind of offering possible. This is an area where Microsoft, I think, there's there's, there's a number of areas where I think Microsoft has, has just done things better and smarter and more consumer friendly than Sony in this new generation. Game Pass being one, uh, better storage um, and storage upgrade paths being another, and this being a third one. When you buy a game on Xbox, regardless of the generation, you just know it's going to work across all the generations. An Xbox game is just going to work on Series S or Series X with no extra money, with no extra bullshit. Like, it's just going to work. And Sony has been much more confusing with, oh, maybe it's $10, maybe it's 20 maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. It's really annoying. I think they have finally clarified it, which is good. I think, you know, they've been slapped down by the consumer. They won't, um, you know, step out, you know, step outside the bounds of this uh, again. I, I, I don't know why they didn't see this coming. They must have known this would have been a deeply unpopular move. They should have just made it. The, like, I don't get it. These are some of the smartest people in the, in, in the business world, right? They run Sony PlayStation, one of the biggest consumer entertainment brands in the world and all these people around the table nobody saw this coming uh guys no, no, no. consumers might fucking hate this you Not knew a that the person points that out no they knew you they knew it was coming but it's what we always talk about like right it's like think of every movie you've ever seen where it's a corporation or even like the fucking president right and he's gonna how many civilian casualties it's within the accepted acceptable margin right that's what this is it's some bean counter being like yeah people are gonna be pissed but it'll be a vocal minority. It'll be this little group. It well, that's this- no. That you're right. You're right, Greg. Because it's not the the, the equation. The, the question they're asking is not are consumers going to hate it. They're okay with if if, if consumers hate consumers hating. It. It's like can we get away with it? It's like well, let's yeah. try. If we can if we can get that extra ten or twenty bucks out of everyone or whatever it is, or we can make them buy the game twice or whatever. Let's let's see if we can get away with it. And they tried it. And if we can't get away with it, then then we'll backpedal. But let us at least try to see if we can stuff our pockets with some extra money. And thank God consumers, you know, rose up and said, fuck you, Sony. And Sony had to sit down. Um, But no, they should should have got this right to begin with, especially when there's another offering across the street. Phil Spencer and, you know, the Jolly Green Giant over there going, hello, buy a game on any any, uh, generation of Xbox you want, and it will just fucking work. Maybe you'd be happier over here. Sony should be, I don't know why they keep fucking up. It, it, let me ask you this, Greg. Do sure. you think the current management of Sony, the Jim Ryans of the world and all the top people, do you think they're incompetent? Because they seem to keep fucking up. No, I don't think they're incompetent. I don't think they're as dialed in as Xbox. This is what we've talked, this is, a, you know, it's funny to be talking about what you talked about in Xcast and what we talk about in PS. I love you all the time, right? Where it is that, you know, we sit here and hem and haw and do, you know, these these minute, these tiny conversations the, about the grains of sand as the news drops, right? But then when you step back and take in the big picture, like PlayStation is still crushing it. It still has this amazing exclusive library. It still has this great install base for PS5. They're selling as fast as you can. It's the biggest thing going, yada, 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 yada. But like, I don't think they're incompetent. I just don't think that they come at decisions saying, we want to be great to gamers. How do we put gamers first? And I really do think that, Phil's team does that. And I do think that Phil's team does that because Xbox is playing catch up to some degree. They are trying to earn back the goodwill they had in the 360 era. They do want to be back on being top dog. And you do that by the same way PlayStation usurped Xbox, right? With PlayStation 4 being like, we are all about games. We are about the gamer. We are about games and yada, yada, yada. And so now they've gone back to just being this big corporation that does uh, you know, finance great art. If we want to look there and talk about Returnal, we want to talk about Last of Us Part Two. You want to talk about Ghost of Tsushima. You want to go down the line of things they're doing. It's when we get into these little decisions, but it's the it's exactly what you're saying, right? Of like, did they lose goodwill because of this? No. Like I, in the moment when the news dropped and people were pissed about it, sure they did. Of course they did, right? But now they've won it back because again, this is a decision only us. Only us, I mean, the people who are listening to the Daily Video Game News podcast, are paying any attention to know anything about. Poe doesn't you know, know this I, happened. I, 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 I mean, I think they did lose some goodwill. Clearly, we saw that happen in real time. But does but what 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 matters to you know? You say that. Oh, uh, say to Jim Ryan. Oh, you lost some goodwill over this. You know, say who the fuck cares? Who cares? They're going to they're still the game, buy right? my fucking games. Yeah. I'm still going to go live on a fucking yacht. Um, it's. The, the the question is: Is anyone over? Is anyone over this going to go? You know what, Sony? This was the last draw. Fuck you. I'm going to go across the street. I'm going to go. The Xbox is going to take better care of me. I'm switching. Be a handful of people, but not enough to affect their bottom line. So they're going to continue. They're going to continue to push 
all the way up to the edge. What can we get away with? What can we get away with? And every time, like, uh, can we go this far? Can we go this far? Can we go this far? Oh, 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 we can't go that far. Let's go back a little bit. Like they're right at the edge of how much can we fuck gamers over before like it becomes unacceptable and we have to, you know, s step back a little bit. That seems to be the business model these days, not just at Sony, but at a lot of companies. Well, yeah, and I don't, and don't get me wrong. I know that there is an infinite bucket over here to reach into of cor corporations and companies fucking people over, right? But like, is that what this is? I, I think they're handling it well here, right? In the way of like, hey, cool. We I, th we understand that we initially said all launch games would be you know the free upgrade path. We this wasn't originally one. I understand why you're mad about it. We're changing it, right? Now there's going to be a ten dollar digital upgrade here. I, I like that they're spelling that out. And there is this push and pull as always of, right, like, you know, I don't think they're uh, Jim Ryan and company or, any, you know, I, I shouldn't say that. Let's just talk about PlayStation. I don't think in the boardroom the conversation is how, how can we fuck over gamers? It is how do we maximize profits? How do we make sure we're, you know, keeping the bottom line fresh? All these companies uh, or all these uh, uh, developers employed and working on their things, right? So I think there is, that's where you get into these. Hem and hawing, all right, cool. Ghost of Tsushima's upgrade path is going to be, 20 bucks for PlayStation 4, 10 more for PlayStation 5. This is the director's cut. Yeah. How do you like there's so much stuff moving pieces that they do it, and but it all comes back to the fact that their upgrade path is very fucking complicated. Whereas Xbox is put an Xbox game. If we've it's if very we've, if we've yeah. done if anything a, awesome yeah. to it, it's gonna look awesome. If you awesome have an Xbox your... game, it'll work on your Xbox regardless of which one you have, and it'll be the correct version without any, you know, having to fuck around or pay extra money. Um, let me ask this because I thought this is interesting. They said, okay, so we're gonna do a very simple ten dollar upgrade fee for horizon then then going forward there won't be any fee at all why not just grandfather they in and say there's no fee for horizon are the no, no, economics opposite way, opposite way opposite way horizons free god oh, of wait, war or anything like god of war or gran turismo 7 going forward will be a 10 dollar will be a 10 dollar fee okay i know but again that that is going to be something that microsoft is will be continued to, to kind of trump it all the way along no you know it's no extra 10 dollar fee or whatever like you just get the game i do th obviously this this is only going to be an issue for as long as we're in this console transition period yeah the thing is greg this con this console transition period is going to be really really long way longer than usual yeah. because you can't upgrade right now there's there's no a lot of people are not going to be able to get their hands on a playstation 5 until perhaps 2023 this chip shortage is really really bad and this and then you know if you go and like read about the actual chip shortage and how there's tens of thousands of cars you know sitting in ford and general motors and tesla warehouses right now waiting for you know chips to be put in because they they're not finished until they have that chip and that's the part that's holding up you know the shipping of the product this is going to go on for a while like i i don't i don't think you i don't think the 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 xbox and and playstation and even nintendo switch uh supply sister uh, uh, situation is going to get better for several months, this this could stretch all the way through next year. So this issue of well, I really I really want to play this game now, whether it be the new God of War or the new Horizon or the new Halo or whatever. But I also want to know. I also know I am getting a, a next gen console at some point in the next year, hopefully. And I would like I would very much like to not have to buy the game over again or pay an exorbitant fee to upgrade it. This is a particularly you know keenly felt issue right now for gamers. They want they don't want to have to wait a year to play a game. They want to play it on their current system now, but they also want to know that it's future proofed, right? That they can play it on then on their next gen console when they eventually get it. So I think it behooves both Xbox and they've already done it, and Sony. And it seems like they are now at least on a better track than they were to make to 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 uh, put in a system where gamers can have some you know assurance and some comfort in knowing that the game they buy today is going to be good for the future yeah but in some way this is all a, a moot point right because there's two very important words when we're talking about this ten dollar upgrade fee right exclusive cross-gen it xbox can beat their chest hey there's no upgrade for blah blah and everybody's gonna go cool but there's also no god of war there's also no horizon there's also no spider-man right. like we're we're not if this isn't is it'd be a you know a different ball of wax if we're talking about the upgrade fee for a cross a cross platform game and i know those exist so you, but for this argument right here right of like what's going on like and it's also yeah people want to be future proof and they want to feel great about it but if we're talking for real about a chip shortage going into 2023 is that is this really going to be at the forefront of your mind when you're like i really want to play god of war but i won't support playstation's ten dollar upgrade fee that i might have to pay in three years you know what i mean or whenever you're going to get your playstation 5 it's 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 like everything else where i think First off, we're talking about such a small group of games. When we're talking about, uh, you know, these exclusive cross-gen PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 titles published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. We're talking about their exclusive lineup, right? But 
We're not talking about dozens of games by the time this happens. And I think, again, spelling it out is the way. When they said, I, I don't remember them being like, our launch lineup, you won't, like, very specifically, like, our launch lineup. But this is also why whenever any developer or publisher says anything, and like, you know, oh, yeah, it's, it's console exclusive. Everybody starts, like, picking apart the wording of what they say because this is how it works, right? They said apparently somewhere, somewhere someone said, hey, our launch lineup, you know, cross-gen upgrades are for free. And now people are like, well, you know, Horizon was going to be one. And they're like, well, but it isn't anymore. But we see your point. So here you go. But now we're putting it out there. Ten dollars across the board is how it's going to work. I think it, it, if there's a if there's a positive to all of this, and I think there is a big one, it is much as it did with Xbox several months ago when they tried to jack up the Xbox Live prices and that got slapped down. And now this with Sony, it does highlight, you know, obviously there's so many negatives to social media, but one of the positives is it does give consumers a voice in a way they didn't have before. Like if the, in, in the age before social media, like how would consumers have made their, what would they done, written in letters? What the fuck is that? No one's going to do that. But it's so easy to just write, you know, at Sony, fuck you. Uh, I find this unacceptable. And then get and then get absolutely overwhelmed with that. The, the whole like, oh, we thought this was going to be good, but clearly, you know, gamers have made their voices heard or whatever, you know, puff piece statement they put out. We see that all the time now, right? Companies backtracking all the time because there now is this very direct way for consumers to make their dissatisfaction known very vocally. And so I think that it, it has empowered uh, gamers and consumers in a, in a in a very real way to say, you know what, fuck, I'm, I, I'm not happy about this. And to, to such a degree that it actually makes these major companies reverse course. So that's, it's a positive, I think. It's interesting, Gary. You talk about social media and reversing courses. Number two on the rope report. It's a let's, Greg way. It's a, it's a Gary way, all right? It's a widow way. Uh, let's talk about a journey that happened on social media while this long weekend was happening. Uh, we're going to talk about, of course, Tripwire and their president at the time, John Gibson, who has stepped down since then. But we'll take you on the entire timeline as we go. Of course, if you don't know Tripwire, they're a video game developer and publisher. Uh, they're behind... Or, they they're behind stuff like uh killing for in inclusion or incursion sorry uh man eater and then uh chivalry 2 they didn't the, you know they published the first two of those right and then chivalry 2 that no they, they published chivalry 2 co-developed man eater like you see how this works but they're a video game publisher slash developer on saturday john gibson the president of tripwire at the time tweeted proud of hashtag u.s supreme court affirming the texas law banning abortion for babies with a heartbeat as an entertainer i don't get political often yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of this issue i felt it was important to go on the record as pro as a pro-life game developer gary he put up this tweet and i this is another one i've been away from uh, social media and everything else for the most part for uh, you know my vacation here in baby moon uh he put this tweet up and Fire and gasoline. This thing took off. You saw uh, getting moved around like, you know, uh, John Gibson, not a big personality on Twitter by any stretch of the imagination. I'm looking at the tweet now. Uh, you know, it has uh, 13.5 thousand uh, responses, uh, 8.7 retweets, thousand retweets, and then 16, a little about 17,000 hearts and stuff like that. As this conversation got going and got moving and doing all these different things. Gary, you were one of them, actually. And I know, obviously, Twitter uh, very keen on surfacing, I think, the people you know. Uh, but you're on the number one I saw response before I got into stuff like Corey Barlog, Mike Drucker. And you were like, well, that's the last time I, I ever consider playing any of your games. Bye. Yeah, and I planned him one of those guys' games. Yeah, Man Eater, right? Yeah, I liked Man Eater. Yeah. And so I've seen there's so much going on here. That happens. There's all these different takes from it. There's all this conversation about it. I think let's just go through it all and then double back to it, all right? So that goes up on Saturday. This was followed by uh, tweets from uh, the Shipwright Studios. These are the people who co-developed Man Eater. Uh, they tweeted, while your politics are your own, the moment you make them a matter of public discourse, discourse you entangle all of those working uh, for and with you. We have worked closely alongside the talented and passionate developers at Tripwire and your partners for the last three plus years. We know it is difficult for employees to speak up or act out in these scenarios, and they may not feel comfortable to speak their minds. It is regrettable, but we feel it would be doing ourselves, your employees, your partners in the industry as a whole a disservice to allow this pattern to continue without comment. We started Shipwright uh, with the idea that it was finally time to put our money where our mouth is. We cannot, in good conscience, continue to work with Tripwire under the current leadership structure. We will begin the cancellation of our, cancellation of our uh, existing contracts effective immediately. 
This was followed by Torn Banner Studios, developers of Chivalry 2, tweeting, We do not share the opinion expressed in a recent tweet by the president of Tripwire, publisher of Chivalry 2. This perspective is not shared by our team, nor is it reflected in what in the games we create. Sorry. Uh, the statement stands in opposition to what we believe about women's rights. And then, yesterday, Monday, Tripwire itself put out this statement. The comments given by John Gibson are of his own opinion and do not reflect those of Tripwire Inter Interactive as a company. His comments disregarded the values of our whole team, our partners, and much of our broader community. Our leadership team at Tripwire are deeply sorry and are unified in our commitment to take swift action and foster a more positive environment. Effective immediately, John Gibson has stepped down as CEO of Tripwire Interactive. Co-founding member and current vice president, Alan Wilson, will take over as interim CEO. Alan has been with the company since its formation in 2005 and is an active lead in both the studio's business and development affairs. Alan will work with the rest of Tripwire leadership team to take steps with employees and partners to address their concerns, including executing a company-wide town hall meeting and promoting open dialogue with Tripwire leadership and all employees. His understanding of both the company's culture and creative vision of our games will carry uh, the team through the transition uh, with full support uh, from the other Tripwire leaders. Gary, as you were vocal on the initial tweet, I want to start with, why did this cross the line for you? And then are you happy with the responses you've seen throughout the weekend? Um, excuse me a second. <coughs> Let me clear my throat. Um, freedom of speech is not the same thing as freedom from consequences. And this guy, I don't know, what did, what did this guy fucking think was going to happen? You know, when, yeah. when you, when you express an opinion in support of something, I don't want to get, this is not the time or place to get into an abortion debate, but I think most people, most reasonable people can agree that this particular law is so draconian and so fucking over the line and so harmful and damaging to women everywhere in America and to the fabric of our society in, in general, that anyone who expresses it should expect some serious fucking pushback it's exactly what he got and i thought the shipwright statement uh hit the nail on the head he's not just when you when you're the head of a company you're not just speaking for yourself uh you know everyone that you work for and do business with gets caught up in that shit i can only imagine how horrified i would imagine the vast majority of people who worked at tripwire or shipwright or anyone who does business with this guy looking at that tweet going what the fuck I don't want to get, I, I can't work for this fucking guy. I, 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 I don't want to get dragged into this shit. This is so fucking awful. And, you know, it's really not that surprising that, that this, this, this came around on him as quickly as it was. This, 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 again, this is a different, we should be talking about games, but this is, it's so bad. There's a reason, Greg, that almost, that you've not heard almost anything about this, even on like Fox News. Even conservatives and right-wing Republicans are embarrassed about this law. They know it's awful. They know it's bad. They know it's wrong. They know it's fucked up. They know it's the, the thin, end, thin end of a very, very dangerous wedge. It's shocking and harmful and appalling. And if someone in a position of, uh, you know, uh, public and private responsibility, like the CEO of a major video games company is going to, is going to on the, just on their own without consulting or asking anyone else at their company that they work with, uh, going out and saying, well, I think this, this, this law is fantastic. Um, I, I think he, I think he deserved everything he got. It's not cancel culture; it's consequence culture. Just, just, just as you, just as he has the right to express that opinion when it's an opinion that fucking bad. I and many others also have the right to express our our opinions and our freedom of expression by saying, "Well, we're not going to do business with you," or we, "We're going to we're going to exercise our rights to to say that you can fuck off and we don't want to buy your games." That's what happened. Amen. 100%. Uh, you know, what you said, I think, was uh, echoed uh, by Matt Kim, of course, over at IGN.com. He put up this tweet that I thought nailed it, right? I'm not going to meet you anywhere on any anti-abortion stance you might have, but I'm not going to even so much as look in, at, look in your direction if you support a dra dra draconian law that declares it open season on pregnant women. That's where the tripwire guy was at. Right. Like, yeah, as you started this conversation, right. And we started debating, not debating, talking about this. You're like, this isn't about, you know, being pro choice or pro life. This is about this very specific law. Right. And it's this law that is outrageous. Or, you know what I mean? This is something else that, you know, happened obviously while I've been gone. So I haven't talked on camera or on a podcast about this. But are you fucking kidding me with this law? Are you fucking kidding me with this law that, what we're doing is incentivizing private citizens to spy on pregnant women 
and drivers and like try to report these people to like these hotlines to have them like what are we fucking talking about like yeah. that's what we're that's where we're going with this let alone and i you know i'll, I'll throw it out there of course i'm i'm skewed in the argument i am pro-choice i believe in a, uh, a woman's right to choose i believe that i have no me as a man and men in general have no fucking right to come in here and try to govern how uh, women want to uh, do anything with their bodies i think that i to me that sounds like such a basic statement of course but now i to say it I'm like ah it's to put all that out the window, but to let you know my lens, because of course I'm going to let you know. Like, to then look at this law, are you fucking kidding me? I think you know again. Six weeks, the, no exceptions. The the the, the, la the larger issue is 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 for another forum, and I think there's room for reasonable yeah. opinions on both sides of that of that debate, and it's never going to get resolved. But I think you can you can go too far in one direction or another, and this it goes way too far. And again, we, we're talking about something else. It, as far as the games industry is concerned, and this and this guy's place in it. I think it was deeply irresponsible to express an opinion, which he must have known. Wait, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he. He knew what was going to happen. I'm, 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 I'm sure he believes it deeply, and he must have known that it was going to be unpopular in many people. And I guess that speaks to how how sincerely he must believe this. That he felt like it was worth going out on a limb to say something that he that, that he keen, that he that he that sincerely you know and, and believes in a heartfelt way that's fair enough believe what you want to believe but also make room for other people who think that what you believe is abominable and there's and there's no room for it in a civilized society and you know and, and it and it there's there's all all of the kind of the the different you know, strands of our social fabric intersect you know from our private lives and our public lives and what happens in the public space and the private space and how corporations behave and how the government behaves and our, and, and, and how individuals behave and I, I do think that when you express support for something this deeply unpopular, um, again to the point where like almost all, almost most conservatives and people in even the right wing sphere, I just I just like kind of go, oh, I, I didn't see it, I didn't see it because they they're embarrassed. They know how they know how awful it is. Um, the when, when you when you scoop up all the hundreds of people that work, uh, you know, with you and alongside you, whether at the company or other companies like Shipwright that do business with you, you put them in a deeply difficult position. But in, in fact, it's actually not that difficult. Shipwright knew right away what they needed to do, which was back the fuck, back the fuck away from this guy. Like this is not acceptable, dude. There are some opinions that are so awful that that it may, it makes it impossible to work with you. So good luck, and yeah, you know, I hope you, hope you enjoy making games by yourself or whoever else you can find to work with you. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna express my freedom of choice and my freedom mm -hmm. of expression to decide I no longer want to work with you. And you know, God bless America. And to your point, yeah, I mean, because we can put a pin in this. I think we've talked it. All right, we we said our piece. Uh, but like, yeah, like this, uh, he knew what he was doing. He knew what the reaction he was doing, and that's the whole thing of like. So, what does John Gibson want to do with this? He knew what he was doing. He knew what he put the statement out. He probably knew he would get in trouble. He probably knew that it, his company doesn't agree with him. He probably knew he wouldn't be working at Tripwire much long, longer. What do you want to do with that? And again, Andy Cortez has a great tweet from over the weekend or maybe, yeah, the weekend that went like this. I bet we're less than a week out from having that Tripwire present on our podcast explaining his side of the story, even though we know his side of the story and the podcast host being like, quote, yes, cancer, cancel culture is bad. I agree. This writes itself. What he wants to do with this infamy is another thing, but we'll have to wait and yeah, see. Yeah, there was a, there there was some jokes over the weekend about like you know Ben Shapiro Interactive getting announced next or whatever, or like there's that you 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 you're seeing this now this weird um, kind of bifurcation where a lot of the conservatives and the right wing um, people uh, who are you know crying foul, crying council culture, are now going off and kind of creating the freedom phone and. The, the, all the all the fucking bullshit kind of right wing you know media um, you know movie studios that are propping up again it's America freedom of speech go for it. if you can find a market for that then then go do that no one's going to stop you from doing that I'm and, and so you're not you've not been cancelled this is the amazing thing to me people on Fox News people on you know some of the biggest podcasts and and biggest radio shows in America complaining about they're being cancelled you're not fucking cancelled why if you're cancelled why am I still fucking listening to you why am I still hearing from you if you've been if you've been cancelled I wouldn't be fucking hearing from you but you're every all the time complaining about how you've been cancelled something's not right this is america you have a right to find your way you have a right to your opinion you have a right to you know try and make a living but i also have a right to have nothing to do with you if i think that what you stand for is egregious and you know the system works we're seeing it work right now some people don't like the way the system works because it's not advantageous to them it is what it is 
the marketplace of ideas is a, is great until if people are like, we don't want your ideas. <laughs> then you're like, yeah. wait, hold on a yeah. second, it's canceled. I've been to the marketplace of ideas and I've decided that your ideas are uh, worthless and I want to, I, I want nothing to do with them. I'm going to go over here and and uh, buy these ideas. I like these ideas much better. Thank you very much. Uh, it's like it's pretty it's pretty straightforward stuff. I think this will whether on this, this I don't know what's going to happen to Tripwire. I think you know hopefully again Tripwire as a company. Has made some good games. I fucking loved Man Eater. You and I have talked many times about how much I really enjoyed game. that game. Really, really fun game. Um, I, th I think there's some DLC coming down uh, the road as well that I might now be able to. I, 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 there's no way I could have gone back to any kind of tripwire game in good conscience, knowing that you know it's that I could in any way be putting money into the pocket of a guy. Like because you think about it, right? It's it's real shit. I put money. I I buy I buy a tripwire game. It enriches this guy who then what goes and funds some of these efforts or puts money in the pockets of politicians that advance these causes. I'm not going to allow that to happen. I, I couldn't live with myself. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to this guy. I think he and some like minded people will probably pop up with some kind of renegade right wing, you know, video game company or whatever. And there'll be a market for it that, you know, and again. I don't want to say best of luck to them because I sincerely hope that fails. But they have yeah, a right. You mean. They, that, they have a right to try and fight, they have a right yeah. to go and seek that market. Just you know, again, I have the freedom to to not buy those games, and that's all you're seeing is people expressing their freedom of expression. You say, well, I his my freedom of expression is saying I think this terrible law is great. My and, and someone else's freedom of expression is saying, well, fuck you. That's how America works. Is is everyone telling each other to go fuck themselves? It's worked for two hundred years, and long may it continue. Well said, Gary Widow. Well said. <laughs> uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you support our ideas and how we talk on this show all the time, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where of course you can write oh, in to be yeah. part of the show. You can get the show with the exclusive post show. You can get a bevy of benefits for things like the kind of funny games cast. PS I love you, XOXO, the kind of funny X cast. Uh, of course, the, the Patreon exclusive show, Next Gen, and so much more. But most important for right now, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to get each and every episode of Games Daily ad free. And speaking of ads, Greg Way, here's someone to tell you about them. Wait, no, just give me like two more minutes. Sorry, I, I messed this one up. I two more minutes? We got a vamp for two minutes? Can I hear you? Yeah, I got I a vamp yeah, for two yeah. minutes, Kevin. 30, wow. Give me 30 seconds, all right? Why are you rushing? Well, you said me? two minutes, so here I am. You know uh -huh, what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. One second. No, you're Keep doing going. great. No, you're doing great. Don't worry about it, Kevin. Uh, Gary, what'd you have for breakfast? <laughs> uh, I had some granola. Do you see that Matrix trailer thing that dropped this morning? I saw like the screenshots of it from some website, right? Oh my God. I think pa Paris must be shitting his pants right now because it looks really, really sweet. It's actually a really clever trailer. Every time you click on it, it's, 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 it seems like the same trailer, but it's actually randomly generating the clips that it shows you. There's like a pool of like a hundred different clips, I guess. So every Paris time you Lily click on the, from the trailer, kind of funny you get X a different Paris you get Lily a different from the trailer. kind of funny it's X Did you shit your pants today looking at this Matrix trailer? I Absolutely, did. I did. Absolutely, I did. And then Gary's like trolling me on Twitter, just just fueling the excitement. So I want to say right here for the record, whatever trailer reaction kind of funny is doing, I, I need to be a part of that. So, okay. That's all I'm saying. Uh, shoot Tim a DM. I'm not sure if anything's happening. I'm, Hit him up. I must have watched the trailer already about 20 different times because I said every time you rerun the trailer, it's a different trailer. With different I thought it was clips. just a website today. I thought the trailer is like no, Thursday. no. It's a, it's a trailer. And the amazing thing is, whatever time you watch the trailer at that's the voiceover you get it's like yes you are watching this trailer at 9 43 a.m and it's fucking 9 43 a.m and they, they recorded these <laughs> actors <laughs> saying basically every time every hour and minute on a 24 hour clock and it bakes that into the html of when the trailer runs and you get different clips each time it's it's fucking amazing i love the fact that this movie is already doing crazy shit and we've barely seen anything of it yet really really cool uh sorry we're ready to rock and roll all right. Well then, ladies right, and gentlemen. All right. I help. One. I help kill the time. All right. I'm out. I'm excited Thank for Thursday. Good job, Thanks, Paris. Paris. Love you. Thank you very much, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a word from our sponsor. Online shopping. Everybody does it. There's no shame in it. Unless you're doing it without Honey, that is. Then you should be ashamed of yourself. That's because Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online from tech and gaming sites to fashion brands and even food delivery. It's also super simple to use. When you go to check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply codes. Then sit back and relax and Honey will search for coupons. If it finds a working one, you'll watch the price drop. Kevin and Tim swear by Honey. 
everything they buy, they run through Honey first just to make sure we're making sure we get that best price possible. Kevin and Tim love Honey. Every single thing we buy, especially for the new studio, we use Honey for because we wanna make sure we're getting the best price possible. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid at supporting this podcast. We never recommend anything we don't use ourselves. So go over, get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash games. That's joinhoney.com slash games. It's finally here. The NFL is back and DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, has millions of reasons to get you excited. Literally millions, because to kick off the football season, DraftKings is giving new customers a free shot at a $1 million top prize, with a total of $4 million up for grabs for Thursday's opener. Getting in on Thursday night's single game showdown is easy. Draft six players from the season opener, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Download the DraftKings app now and use code KFGD. This week, new customers can get a free shot at the $1 million top prize and $4 million in total prizes. Enter code KFGD to get a free shot at the $1 million top prize with your first deposit. That's code KFGD only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. American Giant isn't just the name of the people who make the greatest hoodie ever made, no exaggeration. The folks over at American Giant call themselves that because they know the power of supporting local manufacturers, communities, and workers. That's why they produce everything in America with the added bonus of getting to obsess over every single detail of their clothing at every step. And let me tell you, those two things close to home for me. I love great quality, I love made in America, and I love when people obsess over details. American Giant began with the belief that local makes better. Every detail matters, and the clothes you wear every day should be beautiful and durable. But they didn't stop there. After their first best-selling hoodie, they expanded well beyond it, continuing to revolutionize your everyday wardrobe and leaving things better than they were before. Explore American Giant's collection of durable essentials at AmericanGiant.com. And you get 20% off when you use code KFGD at checkout. That's 20% off at American-Giant.com. The promo code KFGD. All week long, it's going to drive me crazy that Nick didn't like do his hair. Like he clearly just took off the the beanie he wears, and his hair's all woof. And he's like, "I'm going to do this ad now. It's going to be in every show." You think Nick's starting to phone it in, Greg? No, I'm he's. Sorry. I mean, he started phoning it in 2015. Like I don't think <laughs> <laughs> number three on the rope report. Alan Wake remastered is real and announced. We go uh, over to Remedy, where over on one of the blogs, Sam Lake himself wrote, "I'm beyond happy to tell you that." At the time of this writing, Alan Wake Remastered is nearing completion. Confirmed, announced, coming up in partnership with Epic Games Publishing. Multi-platform, PC on the Epic Game Store, Xbox, and for the first time ever, PlayStation. This generation and the previous one. Early on, and I'm by the way, I'm, I'm, I've cut out a whole bunch of stuff if you want to go read Sam's entire letter because it's very much written to you, the fans. You made this happen. Early on in the game, Alan Wake says, in a horror story, the victim keeps asking why but there can be no explanation and there shouldn't be one. The unanswered mystery is what stays with us the longest and it's what we remember in the end, end quote. This is an idea close to my heart. Stories that make me think excite me. Stories where everything is not freely handed out to me or wrapped up neatly where I am left with a mystery. Mysteries are magical to me. They hold a promise and I am often happier with that than a final answer. This is what we as a team and I as the lead writer of Alan Wake set out to create for you a long time ago. Alan Wake Remastered is the original experience you fell in love with all those years ago. We did not want to change that, but the visuals all around, including the character model of Alan Wake himself and the cinematics, have been upgraded and improved with some choice next generation upgrades. Alan Wake Remastered will launch this fall. Stay tuned for more information soon. Alan Wake Remastered, published by Epic Games Publishing, will be available on PC on the Epic Games Store, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4 slash Pro, Xbox Series X slash S, Xbox One, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X. Gary, does this get your X cast art a flutter? Yeah, in fact, I mentioned this to Leah this morning. This one's a particularly uh, a particular interest to us in our household because back in the day, um, my wife, who loves these kind of horror explorey, you know, type games, um, expressed interest in Alan Wake, and we ended up. I think we picked it up as a, a used at GameStop for like ten bucks on Xbox 360. Uh, but we never got around to it. It just kind of sat there. 
Um, but now I think this this will be the incentive that we need to finally kind of revisit it. You know, a nice uh, remaster, you know, updated, you know, graphics. And I'm sure they've fixed a bunch of other stuff as well. I'm not sure what, exactly what's on the list of things that they're doing to update it other than, you know, uh, you know, next gen graphics, which by itself will be very nice. You know, all the, all the stuff with the flashlight, you know, you can imagine how oh, yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to look good, you know, with, with next gen graphics. So that'll be good. I'm, I'm very pro uh, remake slash remaster across the board. I've really enjoyed the ones that I played. And I love the fact that, you know, cause we so rarely go back and, I think it's hard to get, um, you know, uh, gamers, a lot of gamers at least, maybe younger ones, to go back and, you know, revisit games from prior generations because, you know, they, they, they look like older games. They're not, you know, they're not as, as appealing as, you know, the, the current games you can play on current gen uh, hardware. So to, you know, to bring them up to that, to, to current specs, you know, to give them that nice, you know, fresh coat of paint, maybe fix some of the niggling, you know, issues. Uh, you know, they did a bunch of this with the Mass Effect remaster, as you know. And yeah. uh, I think it's great. You know, all all the, these all, so many great games that you know people might be overlooking just because they're older now getting you know represented for a new audience, brought up to you know the the current uh, standards of what we'd expect from you know, next gen hardware. I think it's I think it's a great trend, and long may it continue. I'm all for it. Uh, Sapphire Diamond Ruby writes into patreoncom slash games just like you can. It says, "Hey KFGD, what excites you most about an Alan Wake remaster?" Uh, for me, it'll be playing it. Uh, I'm a big Remedy fan, I would say. But I, when Alan Wake dropped in uh, 2010, uh, I was at IGN, obviously played it for a little bit, and it didn't click for me at the time. And I, I don't, you know, now knowing how much I, I love Remedy, right, and how much I loved, you know, Remedy before with uh, Max Payne, uh, but now, of course, with Control, uh, Quantum Break. Uh, the stuff they've done since then right uh i would consider myself a remedy fan and the fact that i never clicked or gave alan wake enough time to really gestate it might have been just the pacing of it at the time obviously an explorey horror game walking around the flashlight wasn't really you know i guess i shouldn't say the case because we have things like fatal frame before that even but it just didn't click for me in the moment and so now you know we're here in the spooky season of halloween it's already upon us of course September. yeah we're in spook temper right now can't wait of course don't look at me oh look at me everybody Halloween, King Halloween, don't worry about it. Won't be, you know, the baby's going to screw everything up for me with arguing about blessing about it, but you understand. Uh, this will be I'm, the most terrifying Halloween. <laughs> You're going to see so much blood, Greg, and poop. And I'm this not going to need the scariest I Halloween season. I won't ever. need to do zombie makeup, right? I'll look like that already from sleep yeah. deprivation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just stoked to play it and obviously have nice visuals and go into this, but it's somebody who, you know, loved control so much and loves remedy so much. I'm just excited to get in there and, you know, actually see what it is and take it at my own pace and get part of it. So. Yeah. I, like I said, there's a whole bunch of gamers out there who probably never even heard of Alan Wake, um, you know, uh, because, you know, it's, it's obviously quite relatively old, you know, in gaming terms at this point, two generations old. Um, and what's interesting is remedy. When you think about it now as a developer with a much, better pedigree now than they were when they first released that like now they get to say from the makers of control and people right. go oh really that's interesting Game of the year winner yeah 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 so i i, I think it's a, it's a good i think it makes a lot of sense for them to to bring it back what do you think about max Payne remastered do you think it could do that next is that something you'd be interested in I'd love, i mean i mean like i'm i'm such a weirdo where i'm like oh immediately yes i'd love that i loved max Payne one and two but like would i really go back and replay all the way through max Payne, right and i remember how much i hated the blood mazes back in the day now you know what i mean like that was a contemporary game design now in 2021 i'd be like this fucking sucks and i don't want to do it i don't know <laughs> Did, like you know they made max Payne three obviously granted it was rockstar and stuff like that it was you know a different thing but i don't know i don't i that's one my, max Payne's one i look back fondly on but i don't need to revisit i feel like and I also feel like Remedy is doing such a great job of pushing forward and doing new things. And granted, I know there's you know rumors. You got that Joe Scrabbles over at IGN saying, "Oh, now that Remastered's here, they must be working on Alan Wake too." We'll see. Like, and I'd be you know that'd be cool. Or you know uh, more Alan Wake, not Alan Wake two, because there wasn't Alan Wake two, right? Or am I getting that? No, there was Alan Wake there DLC. Was, I thought there was there Alan wasn't Wake. Alan Wake two, but maybe yeah, there wasn't. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Alan Wake. But then what was the DLC called that expanded on it? Shit, American uh, Nightmare or whatever that's it was. What I'm Wake thinking of. You know what I mean? Do you um. Let me ask. I can't remember if we've talked about this before, but I'm sure it's it, you know it's been a topic recently with the the remake remaster trend trending as it has been doing. Do you have a particular game that's like two two generations or, or more old that you would particularly love to wave a magic wand and see brought Listen. into the next gen? Listen, I'm not what even. Do gonna put it what do you want? There. I'm not even going to put it out there. I didn't put it Why out not? there as news. I didn't but put it out there. We all know that when you when that when you when you ask for things, the game industry complies. So why not use some of that power? Everybody's now? going with Metal Gear, of course. Of course, Metal Gear. Duh. Obviously, yes. Blue Point make Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid. That yes, would be a good one. But, but I don't believe it. I don't buy it. It's not worth putting in the Roper report. So I didn't. But 
a young gentleman who's not the king of Halloween, Blessing at AOA Jr., did put in the PSI Love You XOXO uh, chat today on Slack. Or he did a, a couple days Sunday. Uh, it's from comicbook.com, which I don't trust. A new rumor has suggested that PlayStation could announce a new infamous game in the coming days at the Thursday showcase or whatever. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. I refuse to believe it. I don't buy it. However, if on Thursday at this fucking showcase, they announce Infamous Remastered or, you know, fucking uh, Remake or just a new Infamous, I'll lose my fucking mind. I will lose my fucking mind. And all I want, all I want, Gary, is them. You know, we were talking about it earlier with the re-releases and remasters. Just fuck. I can't. You can't easily play Infamous right now. And I don't fucking bring the PlayStation Now shit to me. Don't. I don't want PlayStation Now shit. Put a new Infamous One and Two, same disc, same download. It's a remaster. Let me do that. Let me just run around Empire City again as Cole. Let me have some fun. Don't. I don't I'm not. Play, I, I don't play those though. Infamous games. I. I know that they have. They have fans, but like, I kind of feel like when you go back to like all of the the games from the you know, what you consider like the kind of the first party or kind of the flagship games sure, from PS3. the early days of the PlayStation, like infamous, like resistance, really you know, was another one. Sure. Is there, is there enough of a fan base out there to really justify bringing those back? Do you think, I mean, these games aren't mass effect. They're, these are, these I are know. like little, no, you're you know? not wrong. You're not wrong at all. I think it'd be how hard is it to remaster and put something in. That'd be the thing. The thing about it is like infamous, honestly, I feel like it's ahead of its time. Right when we talk about Infamous, because now, like, keep in mind, like, why I popped so hard for Infamous back in the day. Let alone that I was on the PlayStation team, so I'd be covering it so much. But it was the fact that, oh my God, a superhero story where I get to choose if I'm good or bad, and like what I'm going to do with my powers. And yet, like, it was if somebody's making a superhero game, you know, Sucker Punch, who is obviously super talented, but they're making a superhero game and doing it right. And now, superhero games are done right all the time. And no, I'm not going to talk about Marvel's Avengers because obviously there's been so many problems. But you look at something like. The entire Batman Arkham series, right? You look yeah. at Insomniac Spider-Man. Like, oh yeah, it's an embarrassment of riches right now in terms of it. So, like, Infamous just came at this time where superheroes were really, really getting into pop culture and becoming what you yeah. think about now with the MCU. But it was too early, and now it's it, we're so far gone that if you were to come out and be like, "We have an Infamous game," would people care? Because now you have Insomniac making Spider-Man. Like, you have, you know, like, I'm sure in the back of the day, Sucker Bunch would have loved to take the IP of anybody any superhero and use it but instead they made their own because that wasn't something that was really possible now you go forward and it's like well that's clearly something that's super possible to have people you look at uh, for access working on their marvel game right like there's a million different ways to do that and have that actually happen but, yeah got guardians of the galaxy coming up you know the right. justice league game looks uh oh, sorry the suicide squad game looks good yeah it's good good yeah, time for uh it, it's a good point that you raised greg like back in the day you would think superhero games superhero video games would be like such an easy or a, 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 like a fertile genre, and yet they have mostly been shit over the over the history of superhero games. And it's only really licensed recently it, yeah. in the last few years that they've gotten really good. Yeah, yeah, it's all licensed stuff. Yeah, Batman changed everything. We we uh, Barrett had to go through in the chat. He said we we didn't deserve the Batman series, or we don't. Yeah, we didn't deserve the Batman games. Barrett's one hundred percent right. You know, you can't talk about Rocksteady uh, and knock it. And we can't give Rocksteady enough credit for what they did for superhero games to really turn that around and make it be a. What thing do you think gets. the most likely of the of those like if you think about those sony kind of like franchises that they owned but never really kind of blew up like infamous like resistance like kill zone like so calm like if they wanted to bring one back what do you think would be the best bet from like a we want this to be a success type perspective god that's a tough question gary right because you look at what sony is now and I think if you're, if I was, if I'm there and I'm Jim Ryan and you just lay that question out for me, right? I would do it like this: Infamous, no, we have Spider Man. We don't need two superhero games. That's, we don't. That's need... a good. That's a good point. Uh, then I would look at Resistance and be like, Well, if, uh, let me do it. Again. Killzone, no. We tried to make Killzone work for years. It never took <laughs> off. It never think Gorillas, and I know you can move them to different things, but Gorillas working on Horizon and it's a bona fide banger. So we don't need this. Killzone's dead. SOCOM, you get into, and I would be like, SOCOM, there's not a need in the market for it. Doesn't like, there's Call a hard of Duty Battlefield kind of own that space now. I, honestly, I would go to Ubisoft and I would be like, you know, they're the one making the Tom Clancy games that are like Ghost Recon, that are, you right. know, the very tactical, very much communicated. So I'd kill that. And then you get to Resistance, and I guess. It, I, if it, I'm presented with that and I have to green light one, I would green light Resistance. And because it is the thing of, I think Resistance 3, again, in a lot of ways, ahead of its time for what PlayStation is now. Where PlayStation now, when, when you think of, I'm getting a PlayStation exclusive, usually you think you're getting a story-based, 
hard hitting game, right? That's going to be have a focus on narrative and be fun to play. And Resistance Three was that. It was saddled with the Resistance name. I hold on, everybody. Uh, put down your your torches and pitchforks, PlayStation fans. It was saddled with the Resistance name, which I what to me means. You already had Resistance 1, Resistance 2, and Resistance Retribution on PSP, right? Which meant, guess what? If you didn't give a shit about Resistance for three other games, how do we make you care about this game? How do we make you care about this game that's supposed to conclude the saga of this thing? You know what I mean? Like, and just in general, like for Killzone and Resistance, like, like the last genre that I would want to try and find space in right now is first-person shooter. That, it's so saturated. Like, Do, do we really need like, – how many more of these fucking things do we need? But see you know? the, the 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 wiggle room there. I think would be that what if like, if I'm in first and first off, who is this, who says that resistance has to be first person, right? Like if we're talking about re, trying to bring one of these franchises back, put it third person. Let it be you know this narrative shooter that you're talking about. But also in the same breath of all this, like I think you look at something like what Machine Games has done for uh, Wolfenstein, right? Uh, I think you look at that being a really cool narrative to play through and see somebody take resistance that way. And again, Resistance Three kind of was that. One man's story, traveling across the country, having his son's mitten in his pocket. That was fucking cool. I don't even like shooters, right? And I beat that. I was like, that's I, that's fun. So resistance, I guess. Yeah, I yeah, I guess my money would be on resistance as well. It's not going to be Insomniac though, is it? You, they, they've no. got they've got other things. Well, I mean, they got multiple teams days. actually. Actually, you know what? I said no like that. They got multiple teams. I'm sure Marcus wants to get back to it. They just if it were Insomniac, practice. then I, I I've never really had much interest in the resistance series uh, -huh. uh but if if if, 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 if today's it's modern it's on making yeah. a new one you would have to pay attention to that 100 percent. your mouth to god's ear uh number four and final on the rope reports a quick one is the new ea studio called neon black we're going to vgc where andy robinson writes electronic arts new open world game developer could be called neon black studios that's according to a trademark filed by the Battlefield publisher at both the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and the European Union Intellectual Property Office last month. The listing, which covers, quote, design and development of interactive computer video and electronic game software, is registered to EA's head office in Redwood City, California. The trademark is possibly related to EA's new unnamed studio recently founded by former Monolith Productions VP and studio head Kevin Stevens. Not much to add to there. Keep your eyes peeled for a neon black getting revealed soon enough. But Gary, Neon Black's reveal can't come soon enough. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software on each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. yeah. Out today, Dead by Daylight's Hellraiser chapter is out. Uh, lucrative profits await those in Red Dead Online as Call to Arms is doling out double rewards all week long, while the latest login bonuses will aid in keeping players in tip top shape. Dream Cycles on PC. Sonic Colors Ultimate is on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. FIST Fist. Forged in Shadow Torch is out on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt is on PC. Crown Trick is on PS4, Xbox One. Bus Simulator is on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Tennis Manager 2021 takes center court, launching today on Steam, Epic Game Store, Gog, and uh, the Mac App Store. New dates for you. Crisis Remastered will be available on Steam September 17th, and it'll also come with a launch discount of 20% off. Hey, that sounds like a deal of the day. And speaking of deals of the day, Greg Way, GameSpot's got one for you. Far Cry 3 is the is one of the best entries in the Ubisoft's over-the-top FPS franchise. If you missed it when it launched back in 2012 or simply want to revisit it, you can grab Far Cry 3 for free at the Ubisoft store for a limited time. You have until September 11th at 2.30 a.m., your local time, to claim Far Cry 3. This freebie is only available on PC and launches via the Ubisoft Connect client. A good game, Far Cry 3. So if you have not played it, why not pick it up for free? Gary, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindafunnygames to go to kindafunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody uh, who's been watching later. Kebabs tries to correct me, and I did not say that. Um, that's a, somebody's line about King of Halloween. I don't um, think they should call games Fist. I don't think you should use the word fist in games anymore. Okay. Because you just think about fisting, don't you? You think about sexy fisting, and like it immediately kind of puts you off, <laughs> or or makes you more interested. I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kink shame you, Greg. Sure. But I'm no, just saying, you. like you immediately. You might. My, my maybe it says more about me, but like my mind goes right 
to that place. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not thinking about whatever uh, law. Like, what? I don't sure. know what FIST should, stands yeah, for. I just Portion of Shadows like, right there after Fist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about, yeah, you know. We should just wrap this up. The other, the, the other Fist thing. Right. Druvenator says, cool fun news, Twin Mirror, and tell me why Studio will let employees choose whether they want to work from home or the office remotely. Druvenator, you owe me $1 on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games because I did fucking talk about this tell right them, dude. Or do you them. remember this when i said don't nod said oh they can work God. from home or we're not that was literally talked about that on this episode one, remember fucking he was like, pay us a dollar in. or get the fuck out you know this fucking kid uh it looks like we have some breaking news here from charles Got jacobson it. ubisoft appoints ego ego no igor uh, Manchu as chief creative officer replacing Serge Hascote, uh, who resigned in 2020 uh, before any formal investigations. So there's some stuff happening there. We will look into that maybe for tomorrow's episode, maybe not. But there's movement at Ubisoft because, of course, remember a bunch of dirtbags are at Ubisoft and they're trying to get rid of them, mm. as they should. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, speaking of dirtbags, tomorrow the show will be hosted by Blessing and Andy. Thursday it'll be me and Tim, and Friday <laughs> yeah. it will be me and Blessing at Oye Junior, the Prince of Halloween. Uh, if you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games right now, guess what? Apex Legends is up next with the one, the only, the retired Hunter Pence. That's right. Former Giants baseball player Hunter Pence coming through to play some Apex Legends with the boys. If you're interested in that, but you're listening to this or watching it later, guess what? You didn't miss it. You go to youtube.com slash kind of funny plays our, our newest youtube channel uh, to go in there and get uh, all the archives of the twitch streams remember you can support this show on patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get the show ad free and you get it with the post show gary and i are about to do but if you have no bucks toss our ways please like subscribe share on your podcast service on your youtube.com slash kind of funny games on rooster teeth i don't really know if you like subscribe share on rooster teeth but whatever you do over there god bless you you know what i mean <laughs> right, am i right kevin who knows what's <laughs> happening on that side with us maybe you know whatever <laughs> uh ladies and gentlemen until next time gary and i have a post show to do so if you're not coming with us it's been our pleasure to serve you